Hey guys, welcome to the Wild Side, and this week we're talking about the world's largest species of rodent. It's a capybara. So let's walk on the wild side of capybara. Hey, welcome to the Wild Side, folks. Here I am with Snap. Snap is a capybara native to South America. Now this animal's name actually translates to the water pig. They are a member of the rodent family, which means they have ever-growing teeth. And they have very, their eyesight is okay, but not their best sense. Their best sense would be their hearing ability or their ability to smell. Now their ever-growing teeth also tend to need to be grinded down by larger, uh, harder items. They can chew on bone, they can chew on bark, uh, they can chew on rock, but mainly when they're chewing on the roots uh, as they're foraging, those teeth will wear down. Now having ever-growing teeth uh, can be an issue if they don't have anything to grind those teeth down on. Look at those teeth. Now what's cool about the way capybaras chew as opposed to the Smile. way that uh, people chew is when we chew, we go like this. We kind of grind our food down. Whereas these animals, they go like this. Mm, mm, back and forth, back and forth, helping to grind those ever-growing teeth down. Now you might think that this creature doesn't look anything like a rat or a mouse, but they do. They are relatives, the largest member, again, of the rodent family. Now these animals are preyed upon by different species of birds of prey. They're also preyed upon by caiman when they're very small. But at this size, his biggest predator is going to be an anaconda. You see, the capybara is an aquatic species, diving underwater to find grasses and shrubs, uh, but also grazing around the plains of South America. Now, if an anaconda gets a chance, it'll grab this animal, constrict it, and eat them. So to stay safe, the capybara, they move in big groups of animals. You can see uh, dozens and dozens of these animals grazing together in South America. Now, being called the water pig <laughs> kind of sounds funny, but they do grow as large as a big pig. In fact, a full-grown capybara can be up to 150 pounds. Think of it as a full-grown German shepherd. It's the very same size. Now, as they do grow and mature, uh, the capybara uh, gets less and less likely that a predator is gonna wanna take a bite out of them. Now, look at the size of this animal. Now, this is Snap, and Snap is a male. Now, if you look right here on top of Snap's head, he's got kind of a, a, a balding bump right on the bridge of his nose. That's a great indicator that this is a male capybara. The female would not have that, that bump necessarily. Look at these feet. Look at these very large feet she has on me. You know, you can take more weight on your back legs if you want, Ginger. Good night, almighty. <laughs> <laughs> partially webbed toes. <laughs> they have partially webbed feet. Now it's partially webbed because Snap and the rest of his capybara, uh, capybara brethren will be moving around the grasslands. But if they need to hop in the water, those partially webbed feet can turn this creature, which is very agile on land, into an extremely formidable aquatic herbivore. They can hold their breath super long. Um, they can hold their breath up to eight minutes underwater. Eight minutes? Yes. So a lot of other marine, ma marine mammals, these aren't marine mammals, these are rodents, but marine mammals like uh, sea lions only like two minutes. Right. And they can, they can go as long as 10, but for a capybara, eight minutes, that's almost like a hippo. Yes, it's really cool. Now you see Ginger is soaking wet. Capybaras do not have guard hairs. Uh, you know, an otter would have a guard hair, but a capybara does not have a guard hair. Why? Well, guard hairs do a couple things. They keep you warm. These animals live in a tropical environment. They don't need to stay warm. Uh, guard hairs help you to float. Well, capybaras don't really need to float. They want to sink to the bottom of that riverway to uh, look for their food, which is the grasses growing on the bottom of the riverbank. So the guard hairs would just kind of get in the way. So without the guard hairs, these animals, if you want to feel one, virtually feel one right now, go to your kitchen, find a coconut, and touch the coconut. That's what feeling a capybara is like. This is an incredible animal, folks, but I know, I know this animal looks really cute to you right now in this video. They don't make good pets. They get very large, they get very powerful, they need a lot of room to swim and move and run. You gotta take them on big walks. It's not a dog, everybody. This capybara is made for power, for swimming. Uh, big old rodent. Guys, I love this animal right here. I love happy tails. If you like learning about capybaras, if you want to learn more about the animals that happy tails has, go to their website in our bio below. Learn more about happy tails and the species they care for on a daily basis. 
They can also make your next event super wild. Until next time, everyone, stay wild, conservation rules, and I think Ginger and I are gonna go for a swim. She already started pre-gaming. She's already wet from getting in the pool, but she's up on my lap. Let's go get muddy in the pool together, Ginger, what do you say? All right, bye everybody.